I just want to say welcome. Thank you all for joining us for our seventh week of BCM virtual. We're super excited to be continuing our collaboration with BizHack Academy, even in this really strange uh, world we're kind of living in and everything moving to digital. Um, but yeah, we're, we're excited because this is the first kind of big graduation uh, we've tried to do virtually, so it's an experiment. We hope you all uh, will enjoy it, and thank you for for being here. Um, really, this is not my show. This is this is Dan and Lilia and all of the graduates. So I'm gonna kick it back to you. Awesome! Thank you so much. Welcome to the our digital marketers graduation party. This is the 12th time we've had a digital marketers graduation party. This is the first time we're doing it virtually, uh, but this is a, an exciting new chapter for uh, BizHack Academy in the post COVID era. Welcome. Um, today we're gonna talk about, uh, give an update on BizHack and how it's done uh, since our last graduation. We're then gonna have a series of amazing digital marketing case studies we're going to follow that with a graduation ceremony, the winner of the Biz Hacker Award, which is our highest award, a group photo using Zoom. It's one of our traditions. Uh, we'll have a raffle, and then we'll have a virtual mixer and games. Now, um, we have a couple really exciting raffle items. Uh, we have an upcoming uh, five-week accelerated program that Biz, Biz Hack is going to be leading. And we're offering a free virtual seat in that. It's a $749 value for one of the lucky participants in today's uh, gathering. We also are going to have five all for you rose gold desk organizers donated by biz hacker Anna Maria Carano. Um, and she's going to be mailing those to you. So uh, you'll see in a second here that Lilia is gonna put a link um, into the chat and that link is to a sign-in sheet. And if you sign into the sheet, uh, you're gonna be entered into the raffle. Uh, so there is the link right there. Uh, take a minute um, and go ahead and fill out that sign-in sheet um, and uh, include your address so that if you win one of the great desk organizers, you can have it mailed to you. And I went ahead and uh, filled my information in because I really would love uh, one of those uh, desk organizers for my daughter, uh, especially now that we're doing homeschooling. Um, I'm gonna take just uh, one second to, excuse me, um, to just let everybody uh, who wants to, to sign up for the raffle. Uh, take a minute now to do that. And while I do that, I'm going to um, make some other folks uh, co-hosts so that they can share their screen. So I stopped the sharing just for a second. Uh, please go ahead and fill out the survey if you um, want, want to be a part of the raffle, and then we'll get started ag again uh, now that we have everybody here. Okay. Um, all right. Welcome to BizHack's 12th Digital Marketers Graduation Party and our first ever virtual graduation party. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder of BizHack Academy. And thank you guys so much for coming. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. And I'm really excited for our very first digital graduation done over Zoom. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, the state of BizHack today. We're gonna do a series of half a dozen digital marketing case studies, how businesses, small businesses, are using uh, our program to help market and attract new customers. We're gonna have a graduation ceremony for the 30 amazing businesses that have just finished our program. And then we're gonna announce the winner of the Biz Hacker Award, our highest honor. We're gonna take a group photo, one of our bit traditions. We're gonna have a raffle, which you'll learn about more in a sec. And then we're gonna have a virtual mixer and some uh, fun games that we're gonna play afterwards. So I hope you stick around for the whole thing. The raffle will be right at the end. So the raffle is gonna be two things. We're gonna raffle away virtual seat in our five week accelerated program. That's a $749 value. And we also, uh, Anna Maria Carano, one of our biz graduating biz hackers was generously donated five desktop organizers uh, in rose gold that she'll be mailing to you. So if you sign in on the link in the chat, uh, you'll be able to put yourself in for the raffle. And we'll keep adding that uh, Google um, that sign-in sheet throughout so that you can sign in whenever you join the, the group. 
So I just wanted to give a quick update on BizHack Academy. Uh, we're now uh, coming into our third year. Uh, and since 2018, when we were founded, we have trained more than 5,000 businesses in partnership with 27 different organizations across South Florida and the nation. We've been recognized as a top startup in 2019 by the Miami Herald in their Startup Pitch Challenge. And we're a graduate of the 10,000 Small Business uh, Program by Goldman Sachs, proud graduate of that. We also have partnered with the top universities locally, uh, Broward College, Miami-Dade College, and FIU, and have been working with their accelerator programs and their small business programs in support of giving them the very best in digital marketing education. We've had more than 300 businesses now go through our accelerated program in, called the Digital Marketers Edge, and the latest 30 are the ones who are celebrating today. These folks are in some of the largest companies in the world, Fortune 500 companies, but they're also smaller businesses like Ascendan Studios, who's used digital marketing so effectively that they've been featured in national ad campaigns by Google. In 2019, BizHack participants ran 241 Facebook campaigns. While in the course, they spent $17,000 and they made $500,000 in incremental sales. That's half a million dollars. That return on ad spend is 29 to one for every dollar spent in ads, $29 in revenue, and they more than paid for the course while they were still in it. So with that, I wanna now tell, welcome the latest cohort of the Digital Marketers Edge, cohort 12, better known as Thunderhack. So yay, welcome. Um, and by the way, for those of you who didn't know, because I just learned this today, there's a great set of emoticons um, that you can use uh, to send your claps and your thumbs up, just like Eileen did. These are the uh, businesses that are part of our Thunderhack cohort 12, and you're gonna meet several of them uh, much more uh, very shortly. But first, I wanted to welcome the people who made this all possible, our certified instructors who taught the course, starting with Alex Artiga of Norte Women. He was one of our marketing coaches. Blanca Mejia of Casablanca Enterprises, also one of our coaches. Ricardo Barris of Me Group as one of our marketing coaches. And Alex de Carvalho, the lead instructor, uh, he's with Bowman Blue, his consultancy. So thank you guys to our incredible instructors. Everything that you're gonna to see today uh, in these case studies is a reflection of their coaching, their instruction, their amazing work. Uh, I've been uh, so blessed to sit on the sidelines and watch the amazing learning and the amazing hustle that our biz hacker businesses have done this semester. So without further ado, let's get to the fun part. We're gonna have now a series of real life campaign presentations. These are presentations from participants in cohort 12 who were voted by their classmates as the ones who they wanted to have represented them, representing them at our graduation. And they're gonna be talking about the campaigns that they ran and the lessons that they learned through doing them. And you may notice that in Zoom, there are two emoticons, only two, but two is better than none, that allow you to, to give your virtual applause. Um, and so if you wanna add emoticons, uh, for some of you it might be uh, in the more menu, um, but you can go ahead and send your reactions uh, to, the, um, to the folks. And uh, with that, we're gonna go to our first presenter, who is Denise de Costa Gomez. I'm gonna stop my sharing and let her jump in. Welcome, Denise. I'm gonna go ahead and start. Um, so my name is Denise and so I am Denise, proud. Sorry, I'm gonna just do a quick introduction. Um, I just okay. to, <laughs> no problem. So Denise uh, de Costa Gomez is an extraordinary example of a uh, student who uh, used incredible hustle and really difficult circumstances um, to make lemonade out of lemons. And she was the number one vote getter from her classmates for her presentation uh, because of that hustle and because of the creative uh, ways that she's using digital marketing to grow her business. And, and by the way, uh, I have, uh, I'm waiting for my order of the matcha 
the matcha cake. So I'm looking forward to receiving that and sharing that with my family. With that, I'll give it back to you, Denise. Whenever you want. <laughs> Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, my company's name is Fela Sweets and I do baked to order desserts here in Miami. Uh, so, I'll present the story of me. Fela Sweets was born out of a love of baking that was passed on through generations. My grandmother, Fela, is my muse and the inspiration for most of my recipes. I believe that baking is an art that evokes powerful memories and helps us to connect with not only our heritage, but also with each other. My bakes serve as a source of joy and communion and as a taste of how sweet the world can be. My name is Denise de Costa Gomez and I hope to instill this sense of nostalgia and connection one sweet bite at a time. Uh, so I'll, I'm gonna talk a bit about my case study. I ran a lead generation campaign. Uh, so the main problem with my business was that you know, only my immediate circle of friends really knew about me and what I was doing. And I felt ready to take this to the next level and get the word out there about my desserts. Uh, so first I ran a video views ad and uh, this ad was a total of 15 seconds long. And the average watch time for my ad was 12 seconds, which made me feel confident that I had a very visually appealing product and that people were really interested uh, because you know they kept watching for a while so for the second ad campaign i decided to retarget the people who viewed that initial video and uh, together with my marketing coach alex artiga we uh, came up with a, a bunch of ads uh, for different audiences so we went ahead and wanted to test which audience would do best uh, so I had an audience called foodies. I had another called bougie moms, uh, hosts. And uh, so we went from there and we saw what worked best. Of course, uh, right after running this campaign, uh, COVID-19 hit and that presented a bunch of challenges. Uh, first and foremost, my food safety inspection was postponed. So I was unable to launch my website uh, because technically I'm not allowed to be selling. So everybody who's watching this, don't tell on me. <laughs> um, I'm not supposed to be baking at home and selling. I'm supposed to be baking in a commercial kitchen uh, with a license and all. Um, but because of COVID-19, my inspection got postponed. So I haven't been able to do that yet. And so as a result, I didn't want to launch my website. Uh, another issue I've had is obtaining quality ingredients. Um, with Instacart, it's really hit or miss what you get. Half the time items are out of stock, so that's really been a challenge for me. Uh, and also decreased margins have been an issue because groceries are more expensive than ever to come by these days. Uh, instead of getting eggs, flour, all of this stuff in bulk at Sam's Club and Walmart like I was doing before, now I'm paying a lot more. Um, and in general, I also was hesitant to proceed with these uh, Facebook ads when my website wasn't live because people would be filling out their email addresses and their information to be able to visit my website and make a purchase. But once they clicked on the website, it would take them to a page that was not yet live. So this was something I was really hesitant about. But despite this, I've uh, been thriving through using Instagram. And I'll admit, before COVID-19, I was a bit lax about posting all the time. But uh, as a result of being home and having some more time on my hands, I've been a lot more active, uh, scheduling posts ahead of time, planning stories. And I've noticed a direct correlation between all my posts and increased sales. Uh, something else I've considered is that influencer marketing could be really um, beneficial for me. I have one influencer who follows me, a chef called Ingrid Hoffman, and she actually reposted some of my cakes and I immediately got more sales and followers through her reposting some of my cakes. So that's something to consider for the future. Um, and I've also been using Instagram to promote discounts 
throughout COVID-19. And this has also really uh, gotten me more followers and more sales. So despite all of the challenges, I did run my Facebook ad campaign. Even though I didn't have a website, uh, I decided I wanted to just go through the practice of creating an ad so I would know how to do it in the future. And these were the results. I got 2,415 impressions, 61 clicks, and 22 leads, uh, which I'm happy with the leads. Uh, unfortunately, these did not convert to actual sales because, again, there's no website. So they'd be clicking on a website and then it would say coming soon. Um, so the insights I got through this entire process was that Facebook ads really are a good tool to generate leads and increase exposure for my business, especially since I do have a very visual product that I'm selling. Um, and something that we talked about a lot in class is it doesn't matter what you think. You can predict all you want, which audience is going to respond best to your ads, but ultimately you have no way of guessing uh, because the vaguest of my audiences, foodies, is the one that responded best to my ad. Uh, whereas I had some other audiences that I had created in Facebook that were a lot more segmented and specific, and these did not perform nearly as well. Uh, I also learned that Facebook lead generation campaigns are a, worth, are a worthy spend, as my cost per result was 145. So this really doesn't eat into my margins very much. And if that is the cost of acquiring a customer, that's great for me. Uh, and Facebook ads aside, Instagram has been a really powerful platform to promote and sell my products. Uh, because beyond selling to those within my immediate circle and my friends and family who already followed me, I was able to get new customers all through Instagram. So what's next for me? As soon as all of this madness is over, I plan to actually get my food inspection license and launch my website so that I can start having an e-commerce platform. Uh, I'd like to further develop my email uh, marketing tactics, create a newsletter, have more flows and more campaigns. Uh, besides that, I'd like to participate in weekly farmers markets because I think this would be another great avenue uh, to raise awareness and to get my name out there. And finally, I'd like to develop the wholesale aspect of my business more. Uh, I included a picture here of uh, a matcha pound cake I made right before COVID-19 happened. I got my first wholesale account uh, with an amazing matcha company called Yoko Matcha. They have the cutest shop in Wynwood, and uh, right before uh, everything happened, I was selling matcha pancakes at Yoko Matcha. So I'd like to get more of these types of accounts. And that's it. Thank you so much for listening and for watching my presentation. Uh, it was a pleasure, and I learned so much. Thank you so much for being a part of this and for your hustle. And uh, tell us how you came up with the idea of the matcha cheesecake. Well, I was approached by uh, this girl who has her own matcha company and she said, hey, have you ever baked using matcha? And I said, no, I, the thought never even occurred to me, but why not? And I actually had a great time experimenting in my kitchen. Uh, my pound cake is one of my best sellers, but it's usually a lemon pound cake. So I just omitted the lemon and added matcha and it was actually amazing. So I love it. I yeah. wanted to... I wanted to give your coach, uh, Alex Artiga, a chance to weigh in uh, and talk a little bit about the growth that he saw in you and your campaign over the course of this semester. Hi, hi everybody. Um, no, I mean, uh, Denise started off with zero experience in Facebook ads, um, you know, and she, she was just setting up her website. Uh, her business is just a few months old. And you know, and you look at her now. She's has the welcome series running. She has her. She's experienced with lead ads. She she knows how to run Facebook ads, and she knows how to generate more business, more sales for her business. So I don't know. I, I'm I'm really I've been really impressed with Denise overall. Um, I, I know her personally, so I, I was already expecting that. But uh, she, she just really went above and beyond and really demonstrated that, that she took a lot from the course. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. Couldn't have done it without you. Thanks, Denise. Perfect. Well, congratulations. Um, you know, really, really impressive. Um, we're going to move on to our next presenter. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. And while we're doing that, um, I'm realizing, and it might just be because of the settings, but we can't copy out of the group chat. So um, if you want to get yourself um, in, in the, um, uh, uh, the, the raffle, um, you can use the bit.ly link that Eileen just shared. Uh, thank you for that, Eileen. It's a little bit shorter. Uh, the other thing you can just do is you can um, private message Lilia um, on the Zoom chat and just give us your name and email address and we can take it from there. So again, if you want to join the raffle, for those of you who joined late, uh, you can either fill your information out on the bit.ly link that Eileen just shared um, or you can uh, private message Lilia Posos and she'll add you to the, um, to the raffle, which we're gonna have at the end. Uh, and thanks guys for your patience. I didn't realize you couldn't cut and paste from the Zoom group chat. Our presenter is Juana Jones of Jolly Creatives. Uh, Juana is someone who's really near and dear to my heart because I actually hired her to be a community manager for BizHack uh, after she had taken BizHack uh, an earlier version of the course several years ago. And like many folks realized that enough had changed in digital marketing and with her business that it was worth taking it again. Juana is a huge talent and an amazing storyteller as you're about to see. And she was really able to leverage digital marketing and storytelling in a really powerful way. So I'm going to now hand it over to Juana Jones, Jolly Creatives. Thank you, Dan. Let me share my screen here am i sharing okay yeah. um, i always have trouble with this because i have you guys up at the top and then i can't see the top okay mm -hmm. here we go <laughs> um hello everyone my name is juana jones and i um uh have a jolly creatives we are a marketing agency for small businesses um, and nonprofits, and my campaign was um, targeting uh, or promoting my free marketing plan template um, through video ads. So a little bit about me, when I was working at a small nonprofit, um, I realized that it was time to leave and pivot into something that I'm passionate about, not just good at. Um, and so I believe that small businesses led by women of color offer professional, who offer professional services are powerhouse underdogs. Um, they just need the right person to work with to tell their story and help them find their voice. And so that's what I do. I come in and I am an extension of their team. Um, I don't just work exclusively with women of color, um, but that is our focus at this time. And uh, I tell the story of small businesses through content strategy and design. So my campaign was um, we're doing a free marketing plan template um, and it is a spreadsheet that basically helps people organize their plans for the year, their upcoming marketing plans for the year. And it's digital, it's hard copy, it's it's media, it's, it's all different um, types of things. And so my first ad was this video ad that I ran and it featured my clients, um, but it was more of a, a feel good ad and um, it was not optimized for video views. And I realized that with the help of Blanca, my marketing coach, and um, we revised it. And so we talked more about addressing the problem uh, head on and we switched up a lot quite a few things um, and then the results were that the video was about 20 I think it's like 20 five seconds 20 28 seconds long and we had the majority the majority of people watched a, a, you know 70 uh, 70 percent of the video and I actually had two downloads um, of people going through the funnel of visiting, getting the ad, visiting the landing page, et cetera. And it was placed um, almost exclusively on third party sites, so the Facebook audience network, which I found interesting. And so I wanted to switch that up a little bit and have it be placed somewhere else. 
Um, so I learned that I could change that. Here's the customer journey. I and mean, people would get the video ad that talked about how they're randomly posting it and hoping something will stick or they're struggling to find clients or just kind of, you know, online, just kind of without a plan. They don't have a game plan. They don't really know what works. Um, and especially right now with everything that's going on with COVID, business has slowed down for a lot of people. Um, and so that while you take time to regroup, you can also be taking this time to plan. And so that was the messaging on the copy for the ad. So they visit the landing page, they click the, the offer, just their first name and email address, and then they get an email that directs them to schedule a consultation or learn more about our monthly packages. This was my funnel. So we had um, 50, over 5,100 um, impressions on the video. We had almost 4,000 views of the video, and then 15 clicks on the get offer button, two leads, like I said, but it has not yet converted. Um, some of the things that I learned, the cost per result was one cent, which was pretty good. Um, and I actually had really high impressions on the third party sites. Um, so I was able to go on the back end and figure out how to download exactly where the audience network, like what exactly that was. And the highest impressions that I had were um, these websites, dailymotion.com, tubetv.com, Univision, and iTunes. My biggest aha was um, just kind of coming up with a new offer, um, that that was something that I could give away to people. Blanca and I had conversations and there were these different things I wanted to do. And then we came up with, I said, oh, I have this marketing, you know, plan template that I use for myself and for my clients. And, you know, so we, we came up with that um, as a good giveaway. Placement of the ads, I didn't realize that maybe the audience network was would be uh, pretty effective. And um, I actually took away from this that I do marketing and there's still always so much to learn. What's next? I'm going to continue to promote the free marketing plan template um, and revise it and maybe some checklists some strategies, um, following up with the two people who have downloaded through an email campaign, um, expanding. So I actually recently expanded my team and hired a couple of folks to manage my client relations. And we have a new blogger and we've been getting our blog going. And I've actually recently been running ads to drive people to my blog. Um, I had landed during the class, I had landed a contract with the United Way Worldwide Wide, which was really exciting to do some copy editing for a really big report that they'll be releasing soon. Um, I, in the past, had a storytelling offer um, and just kind of like telling people how to tell their stories. And so I'm in the process of revising that. But recently, like very recently this week, I decided to, um, I was inspired. I was speaking with a salon owner and she was telling me how she's had to close up shop and it's been difficult, but she knows that she still wants to stay active on social media. And so I've actually come up with kind of do-it-yourself marketing kits and I've been really excited. Blanca has been helping me clarify the messaging on that. Um, oh this is a little dated but last week I spoke um, to the Women's Chamber of Commerce and actually generated a couple of leads through that. Um, presentation as well. And so this is just kind of like a screenshot of the DIY marketing kits for small business owners. Um, just kind of a lot of people have been nervous about whether or not they should continue their, um, their marketing during this time. And so this is kind of just like, you know, just a way to help people and sort of like give them marketing kits um, for them to do it themselves. So that's it. That's what's next. And that's my campaign. I love it. Um, I wanted to give Blanca, your coach, a chance to weigh in on some of her biggest um, comments of working with you over the last three months. Hi, everyone. Well, um, Juana is very talented and, you know, uh, branding, it, it just so many things. She's very knowledgeable. And I think that's what's a great takeaway for everyone is that Sometimes it's just like a little small thing that you can brainstorm with someone that, you know, like all of a sudden you get a, a, a fresh perspective. So, you know, like things that maybe when, when I coached her, it wasn't anything specifically that she didn't know. It was just more like, oh, what about this? And then she would expand on that idea. So I think that's the power of, of, being open to tweaking things and and so juana did a lot of that she from from the very beginning and she's very proactive and so i would give that as a great advice like um if you don't have someone 
I mean, it could be just a friend and, you know, get on Zoom and say, what do you think? I mean, isn't that right, like Juana? I mean, just like some little things. But what I love about you is that you're, you, you kept going and doing as much changes as possible. And then, you know, it, and then I saw that whole funnel and I was like, wow, you did a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my, Blanca's definitely been an invaluable part of this experience for sure. So we worked very well together. So great you. matching, Dan. You, you had the vision. You saw it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alex de Carvalho, I wanted you to kind of weigh in on one of the big takeaways or learnings we can get from Juana. You know, I, I, um, my internet, again, rebooted unexpectedly, so I didn't see the whole presentation. But Juana, I love your um, storytelling aspect. That's very dear to my heart as well. I think storytelling is very important. Um, and, and I like that you have that angle on things. Uh, so thank you for bringing that to the class. Perfect. All right. Thank you, everyone. We're going to go on to our next presenter. Uh, so give me a second and I'm going to share my screen. And just as a heads up, it's you, Angel. So get ready. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yeah. So stand by. I'm going to just do a quick screen grab while I kind of make an introduction and then you'll, uh, you'll, you'll be up. Hang on one sec. Our presenter is Angel Gonzalez of Debt Free Angel. Not to give away too much, he wasn't called Debt Free Angel when he started this course. <laughs> In fact, if you went on his social media, you would have no idea what his actual company name was because it was frankly a little bit of a branding mess. The course is not about branding, but sometimes <laughs> you don't, if you don't have a good brand, you can't digitally market effectively. And so Blanca, his coach, immediately identified some really fundamental challenges around branding that Angel had. And through an open brainstorm, came up with uh, kind of an angelic name uh, of Debt Free Angel, which uh, <laughs> Angel, uh, to his very good credit, ran with. So today's case study is about digital marketing and brand consistency uh, and how you need that as a foundation for any online lead generation that you might want to do because how you present yourself online across all of the different platforms is the key factor to whether you can attract new customers using online advertising, SEO, content marketing, marketing or anything else. And so with that, I'm going to give my good friend and, uh, and, and amazing graduate, Angel Gonzalez, formerly of your family bank, as you can see in his, <laughs> uh, his name cards. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen here with you guys. Share, and let's get started. So everybody see that? Yeah. All right, perfect. So I am the artist formerly known as your family bank, and uh, it is because exactly what he said, um, previous to this, I was uh, I, I worked for a company that's headquartered in St. Augustine, and so I decided to use their brand. But uh, brainstorming with Blanca, I quickly discovered that what I was doing wasn't the most effective way to move forward. So I decided to rebrand, and I'm going to start with me, and I'm going to start with the story of me and why it is that I got into this business. So during the 2008 financial downturn, my business took a huge hit and my income dropped by 75%. I was 32 years old and up to my eyeballs in debt. To make matters worse, I even lost the house that I had purchased for my mom after her divorce. It was meant to be a safe haven for her. So I was feeling defeated, but I was determined to climb out of the hole that I had fallen into. Debt Free Angel put me on a path to becoming debt free and gave me back control of my finances that I would never again be at the mercy of financial institutions. I believe that I can help others become debt-free and prepare for those moments that could potentially ruin their lives. I am Angel Gonzalez and I help my clients get out of debt in nine years or less, including their mortgage. And together, we will start you down the path to true financial freedom. So this is the story that we create at the very beginning. And it, it just, I loved, that aspect of just being able to tell people that in a very concise way that I understand where they're coming from because I've been there. And one of the first meetings that I had with Blanca was before the class even started, Dan was nice enough to tell me, look, you've taken two other classes 
let me get you, let me get you started right away. You already know a lot of this stuff. Let's get you going real quick. And uh, he set me up with Blanca. We sat down, and one of the first things she told me very timidly was, um, your branding is all over the place. And she was very nice about it, but I was very open-minded and I, and I just decided, you know what, if this is, this is a, a professional telling me this, I, I should probably listen. So I found it very ironic that the first thing that we started talking about in this class was customer journeys. And this class is about customer journeys, not customer destinations. So I started this journey with Dan and BizHack with a particular destination in mind. And it was to learn how to grow my business through digital marketing. But the first thing I had to do was prepare my branding to get my clients on that correct path. So I was originally, like I mentioned, Your Family Bank. And I am currently, finally, with a brand new website and all new social media, Debt Free Angel. So the reason behind the rebrand is as follows. This is my website, or my previous website, debtfree.biz. But you land in that website and it says your family bank. Then you go over to my Facebook page and it's debtfree.biz, but then you see your family bank. You go to my Instagram page and I'm debtfree underscore for life, but then I'm also your family bank. Everything was all over the place. Um, it, it just made the customer journey very inconsistent. And in my business, dealing with finances, you need to get the trust of a client. And this does not instill trust. So my rebrand now looks much better. My website, I was lucky enough to find this debtfreeangel.com. When, when Blanc and I came up with this name, it, it almost seemed like everything just fell into place. The debtfreeangel.com was available. The YouTube was available. The Facebook was available. The only hiccup I had was the Instagram. But my wonderful girlfriend actually found the Instagram person that owned it they weren't really using it, so she acquired it for me. So I got everything. It was fantastic. So now the customer journey, because of this rebrand, is much more consistent, and I think it will, it will instill trust in my clients. So what I've learned from the BizHack class and the most, the, the most important takeaway is the customer journey, which is, drove, which is what drove this rebrand. My business is very trust-heavy. If you buy a soft drink and you don't like it, chances are you won't buy that drink again, but you're not gonna feel betrayed or let down by the company. I need to build a certain level of trust with a prospect before they'll even have a conversation with me about their hard earned money. If I tell some random person on the street, you're doing it wrong, they're not gonna listen to me. I have zero credibility. I have to build that trust and that begins with consistency on my part and with my brand. A prospect needs to feel secure as they travel down my funnel because prospects in this world, if you've ever seen the movie Swingers, I, I see prospects in my, in my world as little bunnies. They're very skittish and they're hyper vigilant. Anything seems out of place and they're gone out the door. So my biggest mistake prior to BizHack was asking people to marry me on, my, on the first date. I would post something on social media, I would drive them to my website, and immediately start asking them to do the free evaluation. This is also a mistake that I'm correcting. My new website and my new brand is a warmer website. It offers information, understanding, and it nudges the clients along the funnel until they're ready to get started. So even though I didn't have everything set up, I still wanted to participate in the class, and I still wanted to run a campaign just to see how it works and and uh, get get some get my feet wet, but uh, will you marry me was not the direction I took. Obviously, I learned from my previous mistakes. So I ran an ad campaign, but that, because I didn't have any place to spend anybody, I ran an I ran an ad campaign asking people to message me. What I learned is that it's very difficult to go from unaware to client in one ad run. People don't get married on the first date. But since I didn't have a way of running a video to let people research me, and I was just immediately asking people to message me, it wasn't a very successful campaign. Uh, I got 1,242 impressions, only six clicks. And since I didn't have my website, people couldn't really research me. So I think one of the things that, that cost me any, any real conversions or, or possible leads was the fact that there was no way for me to build up that trust. But I 
feel confident that now that everything is set up, once I start running some ad campaigns, I think it's going to be much more successful. So what's next for me? So I'm excited to have started this journey as that free angel. My website is now ready. Well, at the time that I did this presentation, it wasn't, but now it is. Um, I have discovered that my passion lies in helping people get out of debt. So what I did was hire a campaign manager. And this is a guy, he's a friend of mine, and he really knows what he's doing, but I've never been able to communicate with him what it is that I want. After taking this class, he and I are now talking the same language. I, I can very consistently tell him what it is that I want, what is the target audience that I want. I can check to make sure that he is actually doing his job and that he's doing everything based on my goals. So I love that BizHack has put me in a position where my hard-earned money that I'm paying him is actually working for me. Um, and during this pandemic, one of the things that I've come to realize is that I'm going to start projecting my business outward past my physical location. Right now, it doesn't matter whether somebody lives next door or in Tampa, we're dealing with each other in the same way. It's Zoom. Just because quarantine's over in however many months this takes doesn't mean that I have to stop that. So one of the things that I'm taking from this whole situation is I, I can keep doing this and projecting outward, going up into Orlando, into the panhandle, and working everybody the same as if they were in my physical location. And I'm really grateful that I'm able to, to do that for people further than just where I am. So uh, I want to thank Dan. Um, I am living proof that this process works. Dan got me in with a $15 class and then got me into his four week course. And then that four week course led into the 12 week course. The process works. It worked on me, even though I knew it was, I was going through his funnel. It still worked. So uh, trust the process. It works. I want to thank Dan for, for introducing me to all this. And Blanca, none of this would have happened without you. So I got nothing left for love for you, but love for you, okay? Thank, thank you guys for listening. Thank you so much. Um, Blanca, your turn to uh, return the love. <laughs> oh, thank you, Angel. Angel. <laughs> Angel wings. Look, my shirt's like an angel wing. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, the, the first word that comes to me from this experience, because I'd like to share uh, a takeaway for everybody, not just from angel, is the word confidence, right? So just like I, how I said with Juana, like she's super capable. You know, and and then just, you know, like a little tweak of, of just a pers perspective. So the same way like Angel now, you know, he's very uh, capable in his business. He knows it so well, <clears throat> but, you know, he's navig he's used to doing referrals. He was used, used to doing referrals and more online. I mean, you know, just face to face and personal referrals. But now going online, I think that confidence has grown because of the new branding because of learning that foundation so i think um you know being able to say hey i can do this and you know right now like that's just all these baby steps and and then you know you continue doing and tweaking and 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 continuing the process you'll all be successful and and i saw this uh, statistic from someone some e-commerce webinar that i saw today and they're saying that like you know getting here now on digital you know we're all afraid because of covid and the reality is that you know because of the financial situation of, of a lot of people but uh, the a lot of people are buying more and the habits that are being created now is going to stay so like there's going to be much more people used to be buying online and doing things digitally so it's it's so you're positioned perfectly so so going back to what i just first said is that confidence so have confidence just like angel did and have confidence is what you're doing and just you know keep at it that's what I have to say. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to jump in quickly and <clears throat> congratulate Angel for all the work uh, you did. Rebranding is a, is a big deal and you hustled to do it. 
I love that you like learned the vocabulary and the concepts and you can talk to marketing people about that. I mean, that's so important. Uh, it accelerates everything. <clears throat> and, you know, I think you're well positioned if you take advantage right now to build out your presence, your content, give advice, because a lot of people are maxing out their credit cards right now. So they're going to need you. So this is a time to be proactive. I agree. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Um, all right. I'm going to share my screen because our next presenter is going to be Crystal. So get ready, Crystal. This case study is by Crystal Ramkissun of Habit Active, which is an e-commerce uh, outerwear brand uh, made for women of color and by a woman of color. And it is an extraordinary example of hustle. Uh, someone who uh, tried running pay, paid Facebook ads and didn't immediately see success, but then trusted her instincts and started to engage her community of followers who looked to her for guidance and inspiration. And from that had an explosion of sales. It's an amazing example of the power of organic social media, expressing yourself genuinely online and leveraging your existing network to take yourself to new heights. So with that, I want to welcome Crystal Ramkissun uh, of Habit Active and her amazing case study of the power of organic Instagram. Um, that's like, like, thanks, Dan. Thanks for the introduction. Like you said, I, um, I make activewear locally. Um, I wouldn't specifically say it's, it's women of color. It's more so much like the Miami girl. So that's who my customer is. It's very locally based, locally inspired. Um, all my branding and messaging just kind of like tries to talk to the community of Miami women that, you know, enjoy fitness. Um, the story of me, I've been working out since I was a teenager, uh, first to lose weight and stay in shape. And then it became, as I got older, it became a way to manage anxiety and depression and really connect with my community and friends. You know, we stopped going out to bars and nightclubs and now our way of like bonding socially is working out together, going for a run. So it's a really nice transition as I've gotten older. Um, and, and it feels like a constructive, a really good habit. So i um, also a clothing designer by trade. I've been designing clothes and apparel for about 13 years. So Habit Active is really just the natural culmination of my love for apparel and garment design and my interest in physical movement. Um, so my case study revolved around how can I generate online revenue. Up until now, you know, I've sold things like informally through Instagram, but I just wanted to like formalize the process. Um, I had a website and I knew that the obvious best practice is to just lead people to your website to make purchases. That way I can track sales, track product, like which products sold the most, different kinds of metrics that I wasn't able to get through just selling verbally through DMs. Um, so then I found out this class through Alex and um, Alex Ortega, my coach, and I decided to give it a try. And um, yeah. And obviously the first recommendation was to do a lead generation campaign. So that's what I did. Um, my offer uh, for the lead generation campaign was a sports bra fit guide that I created, basically talking about how to find the proper fit for your bra and letting the user know like if her bra was fitting, like telltale signs for it fitting well or not fitting well. Um, I received 32 email leads and and then i brought them into my email nurture um funnel but none of them converted um i mean i th i think it's obviously a long game you know digital marketing i don't think it's something you try once and you're successful at i think it's like anything it's like riding a bike you just like have to test and iterate and and see where where it leads you um that being said i i ran about two more ads after two more paid ads after that one was for video views and then I retargeted them but again I my engage it was it was tough I felt challenged when it came to converting them after I got their email um so this was my funnel for the Facebook lead generation ad that I did the first one I got you know 2500 impressions 56 link 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 clicks 32 emails and zero conversions and I ran that for a few days about seven days um 
then on my fourth attempt, I decided this is when COVID hit and I just want you to know that we're doing really good with the isolation and Oh, somebody's on. Okay. So with COVID-19, I lost the potential to sell at pop-ups and I had to focus solely on digital. Um, my seamstress closed down, so I had to sew the bras myself and I didn't want to spend money on, on ads anymore. Like I just wanted to bootstrap because I felt like that's our natural inclination when things like this happens is like stop spending money. And I noticed that my like previous month I spent three times what I brought in. So um, I was like, you know, what? I need to kind of like revise everything. Um, so I decided to bootstrap and basically start a brand ambassador program. So that's what I did. I gave away bras in exchange for content. And the minute I started doing that, like within the first week of quarantine, um, I started to see sales come through my website. Um, and then sales have been consistent for the last month. And this is what the customer journey looks like. I have a personal page associated to my brand um, called Crystal Active, and it's basically me as an entrepreneur launching this brand. So I put pictures of myself working out, talking about entrepreneurship, and I find it's a really great way to, to be a human component of what a, like the person behind the brand. I think people really engage with that, and that's a way to bring people into my sales funnel through awareness of who I am. They visit my, my brand page because I'm always talking about Habit Active. And then from there, they visit the website and complete the purchase. And when I posted this ad, actually, um, it converted right away because I had a discount code that I shared. And literally within minutes of me posting it, someone used that discount code on my website. So I know that's the journey they're on. And then on the brand ambassador program, it's the same kind of idea. They see the brand ambassador in product, they come to my page to validate the brand. And on my page, I've now included reviews. So whenever people write me like positive remarks about the bra, I screenshot it, share it in my story, and then I store it on my highlight reel so they can see that a lot of people are giving it good reviews. Um, and then I've also started doing a 15% email offer, like a discount code on my email if they sign up. So I've had people convert through that. Like they sign up for my email newsletter. I do the automated email of 15% and then they use that to complete a purchase. So it's basically the two journeys that have emerged. Um, this is what my marketing funnel looks like. It's about 9,000 impressions in the last month of content. Um, Cause I usually get like three to 400 impressions per, per post, 700 store visits and 35 purchases and $1,400 in sales. Um, the cool thing is I didn't, this, I didn't use any money. I only just made bras. That was my, 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 my cost making the bras, which I made myself. My aha moment was marketing funnels. You basically like, you can use it anywhere. It doesn't only have to be within the scope of a digital marketing campaign. You can use it like on Instagram, you know, the brand ambassador program is basically awareness. Like getting out of your own silo so that other people beyond your friends hear about it is like that's what a ambassador or affiliate program does so um just something that to understand and really think about other ways i can use the funnel even in pop-ups in real time like what's the offer you know always have an offer as well so little things like that um my next step is to keep leaning into user-generated content um, because I think that's really adds value to the brand and dimension. Um, keep sharing the story of me through my posts. So that's obviously the post that I put of myself on the brand page, get the highest engagement because everyone's following me. Um, so as, as long, I, like, like I shared a post about what I was doing with COVID-19 and how I'm sewing the bras myself. So my story, you know, I'm lucky in the sense that my story is very authentic. So the more I can share that, the, like, it's a no brainer. You know, it's a win-win. Um, be vulnerable. Again, keep sharing more of yourself and how I'm building the brand and not being afraid of like, because I think that's something we run into as business owners, as small business owners. We don't want people to know like the real, like, you know, nitty gritty behind how we launch our business. We always want to sh like come off so polished and put together, but actually people connect more when they see that you're human just like them. Uh, so that's basically my next step keep innovating my designs and then eventually open a design studio space and continue to share my brand with as many people as possible. 
And thank you guys so much for this course. I feel like I learned so much. And I think it's one of those um, kind of metaphors for life, you know, where there's like a few things you expect down a journey and perhaps it might not get the way, like generate, come back to you in the way you expect it. But if you're open and receptive to just it teaching you something like the other, the principles I learned here, even though it didn't generate money through, you know, Facebook lead ads, it certainly was um, pivotal in me understanding how to grow my Instagram reach. So by being open to that and seeing that, hey, you can apply these tools and, and principles in other places and get creative with it. Um, yeah, I think that's awesome. So thank you. You know, you, every time I hear you talk, I just am struck by how authentic you are and vulnerable and real. And that's going to be why you're successful and how you're able to leverage your network and organic social media. It's just an incredible thing to see. Congratulations. I wanted to give Alex Artiga, your coach, who also himself runs an e-commerce fashion brand, to weigh in on uh, what, he, what growth he saw over the last three months working with you. Yeah, no, it was great working with Crystal. Um, I had a lot of fun. Uh, she has, as you said, a lot of hustle and a lot of energy. I felt. Yay. Thank you so much, Alex. I want to say I'm very impressed, uh, Crystal, with how much uh, you grew in this program. Um, you know, your, your shop changed and it became yeah. better. Your Instagram also came alive and you like learned these concepts and you learned about the funnel and the buyer's journey. And, you know, initially you were asking questions about it and, and then you got it. Right. So I'm, I'm so proud of you for, for all that growth. Yay, thank you so much guys. A lot of folks are sending claps your way, by the way. Yay. <laughs> Good job. All right, next up is gonna be Yoel, Joel. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick introduction, Joel. Get yourself off mute and ready and we'll get going in a second here. Perfect. Perfect, thank you. Okay. I wanna share the screen. Yeah, hang on, let me share it because um, I wanna just do the introduction first. Oh, okay. This case study is with e-commerce brand I'm sorry. Uh, this case study is with digital marketing agency Unico run by Joel Levy. And Joel is uh, a really talented marketer, digital marketer, who is working with many brands across Latin America to expand their reach online. And uh, sometimes uh, as, a, as an instructor, you get a, a student where you feel intimidated about, gosh, this guy could be teaching me things. In fact, over the course of the semester, he did an amazing presentation about SEO and how it relates to Facebook and shared his knowledge and expertise with the others. But I'm happy to say that there were a few things that we were able to teach him as you're gonna be seeing in his presentation. But what I think is even more important is Joel was a sponge. Joel was open to new knowledge and very coachable and willing to try new things and willing to recognize that there are things that he still has to learn. And it was because of that attitude and that openness that Joel had the kind of breakthrough results that you're about to see, and also made him, just to be very honest, one of the favorite students I've ever had run through this program. So with that, uh, my good friend, my new friend, uh, Joel Levy. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for those amazing words. I really, I really enjoyed and learned a lot, so. And I still need to learn from you. <laughs> Let me share my screen. Let me know if you guys see the presentation, please. Perfect. Great. Um, so the story of me, um, when I was about to graduate from college, um, I was looking for work opportunities. The situation in Venezuela, where am I from, uh, was and still is very difficult in many ways, economically, politically, and so on. Little were the times when I drove to my office without seeing someone picking up food, out, food out, out of the trash cans. Engineers and even doctors were earning less than, uh, uh, than doctors 
And after tens of years of starting, these professionals were charging less than $10 a, a consultant. I, I decided one thing's for sure, and I didn't want to be employed since every multinational companies, salaries weren't attractive at all. Um, so I believe that the future of the world bears it entirely to a digital way of working, making globalization, interpersonal, interpersonal collections a more attainable goal. For that reason, I founded ScreenGo, a di an, an all-inclusive digital marketing agency. I am Joel Levy and I wanted to offer my clients the key to a digital future and, and, and foresee as an immediate reality. So this is me. Hmm. So my case study here in BizHack was uh, selling top of the market smart watches in Mexico. Um, we had access to Posio, one of the biggest smart watches uh, brands. And I started thinking of a way of having a new audience and, and selling more watches. And my top of the funnel, my awareness phase was collecting emails. So one thing I learned in this course uh, through my instructors, uh, Alex, uh, both Alexes, <laughs> was to uh, make a quiz uh, in order to collect emails and give something in exchange, what we call a lead magnet. So after a few weeks for less than $1.5 a lead, I collected 100 leads. So then, uh, uh, th this was my funnel. Uh, I, I collected uh, fr from almost 300,000 people, I made 100 leads. But what happened was that uh, COVID season uh, arrived and my sales went down, my agency sales. Uh, so for the first, first time ever, we had a negative profit month. Uh, so since my real life was succeeding by collecting emails, I started offering this service to my clients, my current clients, as a way to collect emails for their database. As in this corona, coronavirus season, uh, many people are staying home with extra time. So um, this way I would achieve a new income source. So the solution was offering my clients quizzes for them in order to collect uh, a database. Um, basically the quiz had almost 10 questions and by the end of the quiz we will ask for their email and after that we will share the best smartwatch based on their characteristics so what i did is i just uh, start, uh, start selling this uh, service where we created the quiz uh, we designed the quiz we uh, set it up in their websites and uh, creating Facebook audiences in order to collect the, their leads. So as of today, two weeks after starting selling this, uh, this service, we collected uh, $1,500 right now. So it was a, it was a very good uh, source of income for this month, which was a very difficult, a very difficult one. So what's next? Um, so for my agency, start innovating and, and, and keep innovating and keep providing uh, these services that can be, that can generate a, a, a positive ROI for my clients. Um, and, for, and for Unico, where, where I sell the smartwatches, is to focus on the bottom of the funnel by trying new campaigns uh, hopefully when this season uh, or well when people will start uh, buying again so that's it you know what I found so impressive uh, about what you did Joel was how you systematically tested a campaign approach for one of your clients found that the quiz was working and then I mean, just I think the the brilliant turn, something I've never seen anyone do in the course, is then take that tactic and then go and upsell it to your other clients and do that successfully and use the case study that you built with one to sell your other clients on it. So kudos to you for that. I thought that that was really just a, a brilliant move and one that any agency could do. 
test something in the biz hack setting where you're getting coaching and a lot of instruction and then use that as a product that you can a tactic that you can actually sell to your clients Alex Artiga, I know that you uh, also uh, are very heavy in the e-commerce space and we're coaching him. You want to weigh in on Joel? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I completely agree with, with your description of Joel as a sponge. I mean, the, 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 one of the cool things about this class is that, you know, you learn about a lot of different subjects and, you know, within digital marketing, but each of these subject, subjects, there's really no end to how much you can like study and go deeper into. And, and Joel was, you know, Joel is a perfect example of, of somebody that would do that. And we go the extra mile, uh, you know, and every time we had a coaching session, he, he, he leave with a few takeaways and come back with, you know, a million new things that he did on like a far further level than I expected. So, uh, that made it really fun to work with him. And, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm really proud of him and, and happy that he got a lot from the course and that uh, he was able to apply those learnings directly to, to get new sales uh, for his clients. Thank you. Yeah, I want to jump in real quick, uh, Joel. I was, uh, you know, really um, impressed by your diligence. You, you did all the work and you did all the A-B split testing and you were really diligent about analyzing the results and that was really great. Also, your participation—you were—you were always there. You presented about SEO, and um, you know that was also great. And then the innovation with the quiz, and it makes total sense in what you're trying to sell to have a quiz, and you figured it out and you tweaked it. And I thought that was uh, really, uh, really great. Also, so thank you. Thank you, Alex. All right. So uh, if you could stop sharing your screen. Oh, sure. Perfect. Um, all right. Well, we that is it for our um, presenters. We have one more presenter uh, that'll come a little bit later in, in, in this, uh, but now is the time for um, one of my favorite moments, which is when we get to recognize the amazing participants in the class with a little graduation ceremony. Um, I think this is a moment where we can unmute ourselves and do some cheering, frankly, um, if, if you guys are cool with that, because uh, this is a, a moment to celebrate. So let me go ahead uh, and share my screen. And we're going to run through the names um, of the folks who just completed this program. All right. So uh, let's see. Is everybody, is it, are people unmuting, especially uh, cohort 12 Thunderhack? Please, uh, you're like make good make good on your name here. All right, all right. Introducing cohort twelve Thunderhack, starting with uh, Adriana Infante, Anna Maria Zano, Anna Lima, Angel Gonzalez. Go Angel. Awesome. Angie Hurt. Yeah, yeah, Angie. Congratulations, guys. Ben LBs and Gil Yosefi. <laughs> Christina Reddick. <laughs> Crystal Ramsey. Yeah. Yes. Denise De Costa Gomez. Mm -hmm. Yay. Emmanuel Suriel. <laughs> George Riggs. <laughs> Gustavo Beltran. I love the wooing. <laughs> <laughs> Lana Cohen, uh, Isabel Bay, Jean Philippe Charles, congratulations, Congrats. everybody. Jesus Luna, Joel Levy, Jose Cabrera, Juana Jones, yeah. Karen Dennis, Luis Martinez. Congratulations, Luis. Michelle Molina, Patrick Imperato, congratulations, and Rosemary Ravenel. Yeah, Shireen yeah. Joseph. Congrats, everybody. Congrats. Stephanie Driscoll, and last but not least, yeah. Victoria McLausick. Congratulations. Woo. Give a big round of applause to cohort twelve of uh, BizHack Thunderhack. Yeah, good job, guys. 
All right, now I want to actually add another set of, uh, uh, of certificates because this was the first semester that our instructional team led this course. Uh, I want to start with our amazing and fearless leader, Alex de Carvalho, uh, who uh, is now officially a certified lead instructor at the Impact Academy. Give a shout out for Alex. Hi. Congratulations, Hi. Alex. Awesome. Alex, it's been unbelievable working with you. I've learned so much. Thank you. Uh, you're you're an incredible you. uh, digital marketer and an amazing gentleman and dear friend. It's so great to be partnering with you on this. Thank you. <laughs> Next, I wanted well, uh, to recognize Ricardo Barris, coach extraordinaire. This is the second time we've taught together, certified marketing coach at BizHack Academy. Thank you, Ricardo. <laughs> Yay, Ricardo. Uh, amazing. It's been great to work with you both on the four-week course and now on this 12-week. Next is our uh, unflappable, unstoppable Blanca Mejia, brander extraordinaire. Yeah. Yeah, Blanca. <laughs> oh, <awesome>. <laughs> yeah, Blanca. <laughs> loved having you, loved working with you. You know, Blanca and Alex worked together at IBM where they both led uh, global social media for Z systems and they teamed back up uh, to teach this course and they're teaming up again next semester for our five-week accelerated program. Blanca, it is so great to have you coming back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then Alex Artiga. Alex. Alex. Uh, Alex is an amazing mentor. Uh, he's a mentor at SCORE, one of the great resources in town. And that's how Alex and I met actually through SCORE. He, he took the course, aced it, uh, is now one of the instructors. And um, I got to say, he had a baby uh, during the course of this semester. So he's going to take the next semester off. I'm going to miss you terribly. Uh, but you, you would never have known you had a newborn <laughs> in the house with the kind of dedication uh, that you gave to all mm -hmm. of us. This course, it is such gratitude that we share that we thank you and, and uh, congratulate you with this certificate. Thank you, yeah, Ale. Ale. thank you. Good seeing you, Alex. All right, now, without further ado, the most important, the biggest award that BizHack gives it's called the BizHacker Award. What is the BizHacker Award? It is our highest honor. We give it to the participant voted by their peers to exemplify the biz hacker mentality. The biz hacker mentality is the embrace the new, the constant experimentation, experimentation uh, the dare, dare to fail gloriously, the uh, person who is unwilling to say take no for an answer and gives her best in every circumstance imaginable. And I'm so happy to give the biz hacker award, well, her peers gave the Biz Hacker Award to Anna Lima. Congratulations. Yeah, Anna. Hey, thank you so much. Wow. Good job, Anna. Thank you. Thank you all so much. That's I, I am so honored. I'm surprised. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so inspired by all of you. So this is a serious honor. Thank you. Oh, it's, it's so well deserved, as I'm sure everybody uh, would agree. So we're now going to give you a chance to kind of have the final case study of the evening, talk a little bit about the work that you've done with Tropical Audubon Society, we'll get the little nonprofit in the house. So let me do a quick introduction. And then uh, if you could then share your screen and we'll get we'll get started with that. Um, just as a quick word on time, uh, we'll run a little bit past uh, 730. Uh, we're going to have a little virtual mixer afterwards. We still have the raffle to announce, uh, so please stick around. Sorry that we're running a little bit late. Uh, we got a little start, started a little bit late as well. All right. This case study is with Anna Lima of the nonprofit Tropical Audubon Society. The Tropical Audubon Society has a birding club, and Anna has found incredibly creative and smart ways to grow that club and to get new donors and new members through her savvy digital marketing. And you're gonna hear, learn a little bit more about Anna the person, uh, the extraordinary mother and professional, as well as Anna the Cracker Jack digital marketer. <laughs> so uh, welcome Anna and thank you and congratulations for being our Biz Hacker Award winner, the highest honor that we give to any student uh, in, in the program. Thank you, Dan. That's 
that's so meaningful to me. Thank you. So I guess I should share my screen. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Everybody, everybody can hear me. Yep, we hear you loud and clear. So I'm going to be talking about the bird friendly demonstration garden campaign at Tropical Audubon Society. My name is Anna Lima and I'm the Communications Director at Tropical Audubon. I'm a journalist, media professional, and public relations consultant. And my passion is for environmental conservation, birds, and connecting people to nature. I'm one of the founding members also of Phoebe's Birding, a South Florida all-female birding group. And I took BizHack to sharpen my skills and advance the mission at my nonprofit. At Tropical Audubon Society, our mission is to conserve and restore South Florida ecosystems, focusing on birds, other wildlife, and their habitats. We do this through conservation, education, historical preservation, and community events. Just a little bit of background. Um, John James Audubon was a painter, ornithologist, and naturalist who lived in the uh, late, early 1800s. He painted all of the 435 birds of North America. About 100 years later, a group of women in New England created a society called the Audubon Society to fight for laws to protect millions and millions of wading birds in this country that were being slaughtered for their beautiful plumes that had the hats of high society women. Fast forward to today, the National Audubon Society has more than 500 chapters across the country, and we are the local South Florida chapter. The painting to the right here is of the Carolina parakeet, which John James Audubon painted and which sadly is um, extinct today. At Tropical Audubon Society, one of the things that we do is we try to encourage people to get out there and in their backyards and um, plant native plants and gardens that attract and nurture birds and other wildlife. So a few months ago, we got a county grant to start our own demonstration garden right on our property in South Miami. For the class, what I decided to do was to run a $45 Facebook video lead ad campaign and test two audiences, bird watchers and plant lovers. And one of the things that my excellent coach, Alex Artiga, um, taught me was to really separate my audiences out. Before I took the class, I was sort of lumping all my um, audiences into one and um, targeting them as sort of one large audience. And now um, I've uh, learned how to segment my audiences and I learned, I've learned a lot from that. So thank you, Alex. So what I offered was free tips for a bird friendly garden. And I was um, very, and this is the ad that I ran. We ran, um, oops, sorry, a video ad. And then from that, I did a whole lead generation email um, campaign offering the, um, the leads our free tips and then continuing to nurture them. Our result was 47 leads for 96 cents per lead, which, which I, um, I considered a success. One of the things, one of my aha moments out of this campaign though was um, to see how the different audiences reacted to that video and I found that um, it really resonated a lot more with the bird lovers than the plant lovers. So going forward, I'm going to create a whole different ad for our plant lovers and um, just sort of use this whole testing of audiences going forward with all my campaigns. Because this, like I said, it's one of the biggest things that I learned out of this, um, one of the biggest lessons I learned out of this, uh, this class. So here's my marketing funnel. I had 4,964 impressions, 3,761 video plays, and 47 leads. My next step is to continue this email campaign. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, we couldn't have volunteers come to uh, participate in the planting of our garden. So as soon as the COVID restrictions lift and we're able to have people on our uh, property, 
I'm going to hit up those leads again. And um, from now until then, just sort of keep them nurtured with um, a very uh, ongoing email campaign. And also I plan to run a membership campaign on Facebook post COVID. Um, I had it all ready to go, but because of COVID, we decided not to ask people to donate. Um, and I also learned how to, um, a lot more about custom audiences in this class and have some custom audiences ready to go. For example, I have um, my email subscribers who are not members uploaded so that I will be able to target that audience and um, convert them into members. My journey, my next step is to use my journalism and communications experience as well as cutting edge digital marketing skills to help Tropical Audubon Society share its story and grow our mission. And I plan to follow my passion to protect our planet for future generations. As I said before, those are my, my boys and I do this all for them. And I really wanna thank everybody in this class um, for uh, inspiring me. I wanna thank Dan and I wanna thank Alex for um, just their support and their coaching. And um, I just wanna say that, you know, one of the things that I really got out of this class too is that it, it's digital marketing, but it's really a lot, a lot more than just technical know-how and knowing like the technicalities of, of marketing. It's also you know, learning about knowing and understanding people and being empathetic. And I think having this class during COVID really underscored that idea that, you know, you need to know your customer or your follower or who you're trying to reach out to. And, you know, having with COVID happening and all these things happening during this class, it really forced me to rethink um, my marketing uh, strategy and um, more about what we can do to help others in, 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 during these times. So thank you all very much. And I, I hope to um, follow and um, support all of you um, even after this class. So I don't see this as an end, I see it as uh, the beginning of a journey. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and it's, you know, it's been great to have you back. I know you took the course uh, a few years ago and uh, are retaking it. And uh, I hope you got a lot out of it the second go round. A lot has changed, huh? Yes. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask Alex, your coach, Alex Ortega, to weigh in. Um, no, I mean, yeah, it, w it was amazing working with Anna. She She's just an awesome person and has such a strong passion for her mission. So I had a lot of fun. Um, you know, she had taken the class before, so she was really honing her skills and, you know, getting an update on what's going on. She had a lot of challenges with her website in the beginning. She, you know, her, her company was setting up a new website and she didn't have, uh, you know, complete access. So she moved forward nevertheless and uh, got great results with her ads then got the push she had the, the problems with covid not being being able to promote her live event but then started thinking about you know being, uh, about uh, discovering that that new audiences that she had within her organization which was great and uh, i'm sure her magic and uh, to target that audience so, you know, a great example of perseverance, a um, great person to work with, and I had a lot of fun, so thank you. Thank you. Alex, did you want to weigh in? Alex uh, De Carvalho? Oh, very quickly, Anna. I'm very impressed by all the work you've done, and I really like that you had these two personas, you know, the bird lovers and the flower lovers, and I think there's probably more personas. I think, uh, you know, bird watching probably now is counted as a non-essential activity, but you know it is out in nature and and maybe you can develop some content around how birds are adapting to the lack of people and <laughs> you know bringing the birds to uh, people who are on their computers all day so congrats thank you uh guys this is the moment when we do our class photo and we have a tradition uh to um do a straight uh faced photo and a, a silly photo uh anna you can stop sharing your screen by the way um, so, um, so what we should do is please put on your video 
Uh, I should have given you a little bit of a warning to primp yourself and make yourself beautiful. Um, I want our guests to be joining us as well. Um, and um, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go into grid view and we're gonna make it big and we're gonna get everybody uh, and your beautiful smiling faces in there. Um, by the way, while we're all getting ourselves set up and primped, it's really fun to watch like Sharon Seabold like fixing her beautiful hair. Uh, Shireen is tightening her ponytail. Sorry, I got you. <laughs> I can see you through that screen. Uh, Eileen uh, has the beautiful background. Um, uh, Blanca is not so backlit anymore, which is good. Um, so it's great to have everybody. Uh, oh, I like uh, JP, you're looking great. You seem to be out and about, which is good. Um, so we'll, uh, you, uh, Lilia, let, me know, let us know when you're ready and we'll, uh, we'll make those big smiles. Okay, so you need to, don't close your eyes, don't open your mouth. <laughs> no, because it's gonna take a little bit of time because we have two screens. So you don't know if you're in the first one or in the second one. Okay, so I'm gonna count to three. And then Wait, before you, before you do that, let me see if I can get Yi Wei, Ingrid, Mario, Nechama, iPhone Lilia, Lady Emma, Harold Silver, or Eli uh, Weinstein. If any of you guys could turn on your videos, uh, as well as Annalie da Costa Gomez. Um, I have a feeling that's uh, related to uh, Denise. Um, all right. That's, and where'd you go, Juana? We miss you. Where did you go? It's very dark. Okay, there you go. <laughs> All right, Juana's back. Okay, and by the way, Steph, I love your two girls. Thank you for sharing this with them. This is gonna be the first time, oh, they're so embarrassed. This is gonna be the first time we've ever had kids in this photo, so this is great. Okay, ready? One, two, smile. I'll take another one and then two more. One, two. Wait a second. One, two, smile. Okay, let me go to the other screen. Okay, one, two, smile. Another one on that screen. We're almost there. One, two, smile. Okay, we got it. No, we didn't. That was the easy one. Now the important one is, which is the crazy one. All right, you guys have to do this. So you need to like do some like Madonna hands. Everybody, there you go, Eileen. I like that. All right, uh, Lilia, take lots of photos and we're gonna just strike poses, okay? Whatever you want. All right, everybody go crazy on screen one. Let's go. Different poses, everybody. <laughs> oh, I like open hands. One more, one more. one. <laughs> All right. Nice. Did you get screen two? Wow. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. Good job, guys. Um, that was actually just a social experiment to see if you guys would look ridiculous for us. Thank you for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. You guys are the best. I really appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so... Uh, we now uh, are getting to the part you've all been waiting for, which is who are the winners of our raffle? So let me, uh, give me a second and let me just get this all set up. Uh, hang on. And to celebrate, you can grab a glass of wine, a beer, whatever. Remember that on Venture Cafe, we have free wine through here. Now right. it's free. Own your own drink, so you're more than welcome to do it. All right, so I'm going to share my screen for this. 
All right, so we did the class photo. Um, so one of the prizes is the five-week program that we're going to be launching on May 12th uh, in digital marketing um, during COVID-19, which is just the new reality. Um, it's an accelerated course similar to the program that these folks went through, and it's for business owners. And we're going to be teaching a lot of the same stuff. We're adding all new material updated with COVID-19 and some new modules and things like pricing and SEO, which are just critical in moments like this. Um, if you're interested in learning more, I'm hosting a series of fireside chats. The first one is tomorrow at 1230. This is an info session to figure out whether or not this course is a fit for you. If you're interested in joining us, go to bizhack52.eventbrite.com. We'd love to have you join this experience and be part of the amazing um, community that we're trying to form. If you're interested in applying for the course, go to apply.bizhack.com. If you want a syllabus, the link is try.bizhack.com slash syllabus. And the fireside chat, as I mentioned, is bizhack52.eventbrite.com. Com. All right, so I'll leave that on the screen while we go through our raffle. So as you guys remember, the raffle items were twofold. One is we're giving away five virtual seats in this five-week accelerated course, and we're giving away organizers donated by Anna Maria Carano. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes? Okay. So the five virtual seats go to, drum, drum roll please, Harold Silva, Angie Herchuk, Crystal Ramkissun, Rosemary Ravenal, and Neshama Lewin. So these are a $749 value. This is gonna allow you to watch the 20 hours of programming. Uh, live webinars, uh, the recorded lessons. Uh, it's going to be, uh, for some of you who've actually already taken the course, a fabulous update and review. And for those of you uh, who haven't yet taken it, it's going to be a chance for you to get a taste of what the experience is like. Um, and then for the organizers, the winners are Myra Rocha, Denise Da Silva, Shireen Joseph, and Stephanie Driscoll. Congratulations to all of our winners. I'm going to put them here in the chat right now. Make sure that you guys um, can see that. And um, we will be in touch with you um, about the virtual seat and the organizers. Um, and congratulations, uh, guys, to for our winners. Uh, and now um, we're going to um, uh, talk about what's next, which is celebration. We actually have a little bit of a program scheduled and set up for you. So feel free to stick around and we're gonna play uh, a little game. Uh, the first one is a game called Give Get, which is, is there something that you can give to the community um, and something that you need from this community? So the way Give Get works is it's an offer of help or to ask for help. So if you wanna play and participate with us, um, go ahead and put a resource or offer help uh, or ask for help, put it in the chat. Um, we'll highlight a few of them there. And then uh, once we've done that, we have another uh, game that we're gonna play with you guys. So um, I hope you uh, join in for the fun. Uh, as many of you guys are willing to stick with us, we're here uh, to play with you. So, um, so Keith, her, a Spurlock says offer, he offers IT services to help people work from home. Cyberman is his company. Juana Jones uh, has a fabulous free marketing plan template that you can use. And there's the URL. Um, Angel, uh, thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, Angel, uh, as you guys know, runs Debt Free Angel. Um, uh, Helen, uh, you're, you're so welcome. If you guys have any resource that you want to share or if you need help with anything, now's a chance to ask for it. Um, we will be here. Uh, and then we have uh, another little fun mixer uh, if you're willing to hang with us and give it a, give it a crack. Eileen says Adventure Cafe Miami is part of a global network in 11 cities. 
We'd love to see how we can help. You can shoot her an email at Eileen at Venture Cafe Miami um, for continents. Um, Eileen is an amazing oh, no. uh, resource to you guys as well because help if you have if you want to kind of position yourself as a thought leader in an area that it might yeah. be a fit for the I'm programming that the Venture Cafe does. Eileen, as out of curiosity, how many um, how is the how are the virtual sessions going in terms of participation? Right, actually, we're seeing around from Miami um, around 200 people every Thursday. This is our seventh week, and as a comparison, when we were in person, we were seeing around 250 to 300. So it's not so far off where we were before, uh, but as part of a global network, right? So we're in 11 cities, 10 of which are doing virtual. Um, we have about 2,000 attendees every week over almost 24 hours of virtual venture cafe. So on the East Coast from midnight to 8 p.m., uh, again, Eastern time, almost at any hour, you'll be able to join a venture cafe starting off in Sydney, Australia, moving to Tokyo early in the morning, and then Rotterdam and Warsaw um, around lunchtime before all of the U.S. sites jump in around three or four in the afternoon. And so altogether, we're seeing again, 2,000 to 2,500 people joining in. Um, and it's been really amazing for us because as a global network uh, that's very heavily focused on the in-person experience until yeah. now, um, this has been really a, an incredible opportunity for us to collaborate together truly and to connect our own communities. Um, so yeah. Fabulous. So I wanted to do a little fun get to know you exercise that uh, Lilia turned me on to. Um, and what I think we'll do with the folks that are willing to be a part of it. Uh, oh, by the way, Harold Silva shared this. Thanks, Harold. Uh, oh, and congratulations, by the way, on the uh, being part of the um, to getting the, the free um, virtual seat in the course. Harold runs Claudia's Flowers, which distributes prepared bouquets to supermarkets and sells online. Um, and so uh, he's looking now for a delivery service for ordered arrangements, like an Uber Eats, but for flowers. So if anybody knows um, a way for him to uh, deliver a delivery service for flowers, uh, please let him know. Also, Lilia, you might want to connect him with the flower wholesaler who um, you were <laughs> part of with your scale up program if you wanted to message him with that. Oh, Leticia, um, it's so great to have you here. I didn't realize you were here. Um, Leticia is happy to help folks think about communications, uh, adaptation of in-person programs with partners, supporters, and customers, including non-transactional conversations and thinking about brand affinity around this time, because she's doing a lot of that these days. Leticia, you're, you're still working with National Audubon, correct? I am, and I wouldn't miss Anna's graduation for anything, so. I know. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, Leticia is a graduate of the program. She was here in the local Tropical Audubon Society and then got snatched up by National, which it seems like Anna Lima is inevitably going to get as well. <laughs> as a result of New York City, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, bye, Juana. Take care. Uh, Rosemary will offer anyone on this chat a one-hour presentation skills coaching session via Zoom on your favorite video call service. That's an amazing offer, Rosemary. Wow. Um, I might actually take you up on that. Um, but thank you for that. Uh, Alex at, at uh, Alex de Carvalho is who could be reached. Oh, by the way, Rosemary, uh, make sure to put your contact info in case anybody doesn't know how to best reach you. Um, all right. So you've been staring at my screen for a little while. I'm going to actually invite you guys to weigh in here. Uh, on one of these questions. And um, just because you were the one who came up with them, Lilia, I'm gonna start with you. Um, do you wanna uh, kind of introduce the game and then you get to pick one of the questions and answer it? Okay, yeah, so this is a very simple. Uh, these are questions to get to know each other. Um, we know already your businesses and if uh, you are not part of the cohort, please make sure to write your information on the chat so everybody can know you better and have your contact information. And these are like different questions that maybe normally uh, people will not ask. And I will say, and yes, um, make, make sure if you're, get, if you're gonna stick around for this, I'm gonna pick somebody 
and that person can also choose a question to answer and then for uh, my case i will say uh mm, if you could teach a class on any subject or skill no matter how obscure <laughs> what would it be uh i think dancing because i love dancing and i have been dancing my whole life but i have never I mean, I'm also a summer instructor, but I do not have a class or I don't teach a class, but I think it, to be able to, to teach somebody something that I love that is dancing, that will be great. So that will be myself. So I'm gonna look here at the people who are still here with us and thank you. I mean, this two, almost two hours have been like super fast for me at least. So I will say, Blanca, you're next. What question do you want to answer? Hi, you put me on the spot. Yes. <laughs> um, which one, uh, if I could be the only, about the three things in a deserted island? Yeah, go ahead. Um, water. <laughs> <laughs> My water bottle, because I can't drink salt water. <laughs> Um, sushi and, um, huh, I'm on a deserted island. We're not going to have Wi-Fi, so I'd say my daily banana. <laughs> 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 I need to have my daily banana. Sounds like those are all things you could get on a desert island. Maybe not the fresh water, but yeah, I think you're good. <laughs> you will provide a blanket. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. So Blanca, now you get to pick somebody who's still on the chat who you want to answer the questions. All right, uh, let's see, uh, Stephanie. Oh, so, what, sorry, what's the question? So the questions you are on the screen. I don't know if you can see the screen. Oh, okay, yeah. What is one new hobby or form of entertainment? Okay, um, you know, my kids and I have been doing a lot a lot a lot of baking um and we made monkey bread today which was pretty cool um so i would say that that's a new hobby i i don't usually cook a lot um so that has been fun for us um if i could teach a class on any subject or skill no matter how obscure what would it be um fun, but if i could teach a class I would want to be a yoga teaching a yoga class. Nice. Um, you don't have to answer all of them. Just pick one. You, 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 oh, you, you sorry. Done more than you were expected. So now you get to pick someone else to share. I haven't. We haven't uh, heard from a couple people. So feel free to pick anyone on the list. Okay. Um, how about I'm gonna go with um, Ricardo. Good one. Okay, I didn't see that one coming, so. Uh, <laughs> I would have picked you too. Um, so, what's, let me see what we got here. What is a new hobby or form of entertainment you've discovered during, well. Really uh, good, come on, that's so loud. I would say it would be discovered, but um, let's probably use another one then. Uh, it's the first place in the world you want to visit. You know, no. Uh, my mom ever had me worn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really? Well, let's probably do, I'll do number one, which is the hobby and a form of entertainment I've discovered during the quarantine. So my wife loves, loves uh, um, the TV. And um, every time that she's around it, <clears throat> she's always inviting me to join her. And it's always my challenge that I'm not really a TV person. So... I, I usually choose work over watching television. And so she discovered this um, this uh, series called Highlander. I'm not sure if you know it. And she told she started telling me about it. And I said, okay, sounds interesting. So let me go take a look at it. And uh, believe it or not, it's, it's uh, five, it's got five series. And we literally binge watch all the five series. So I really realized that I discovered that I, I probably could watch TV, um, so that's that's pretty interesting. So that, that was a, a nice entertainment during during this whole COVID time. 
You're talking about Outlander with Jamie Fraser? Outlander, yes. Oh, <laughs> man. That is so good. I love that it's show. Crazy. It's crazy good. I told her, I, I call her assassinating now, and I told her, Sassanik, you, you made a, a great discovery for me. So. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Very cool. Um, right. I'm somebody else. Yeah, pick somebody else who's who's hanging around. All right. Um, let me see what's happening here. How about? Uh, oh, I see Keith there. Keith, I, I like his background, so I'm probably gonna pick on him if you can hear me. Yeah, I, I took that picture in Dry Tortugas. That uh, ocean from the Dry Tortugas down off of Key West. Awesome. It's beautiful. Can, yeah, thank you. Um, one of the hobbies that I've been doing since this. I've really been busy though because my computer business has been helping people, my clients get the employees working from home. So that's been keeping me pretty busy. But one thing I've been doing is I've been going out for daughter proper protection and I've been I do photography too. And I've been documenting Miami in, in um in the quarantine. And I've got some pretty spectacular pictures of all the major areas with no traffic, no people like 8th Street with nobody there. Um, downtown, Brickell, no traffic, but all these beautiful buildings lit up at night. And so I'm just documenting this. I'm also doing live videos on Facebook too. I did a lot of, a lot of them in Miami Beach last Sunday. And um, so I kind of found a new hobby or entertaining going out and documenting um, history. Because it's a good historic time, and um, I know I'm taking risk with it, but I'm doing well to protect myself. I don't have any underlying issues that I'm be concerned about, but I'm kind of being, I guess, uh, going rogue a little bit. <laughs> and just, I got to pick somebody else here. Thank you for sharing. Okay, go on my Facebook page and see these pictures when I post them. Let's see. Let's go with. Um, I met Alex after we graduated from class. Um, in December, I really enjoyed meeting him. So, how about Alex? That's you, Alex Ortega. Uh, um, <laughs> it goes the, 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 the instructor. <laughs> he does the hair nails. He used to work with the hair nails like I used to wear. <laughs> oh, is that me? Yes. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So, one place I'd uh, like to visit is Bali. You know, uh, Blanca has already been to Bali twice, and it's very, uh, you know, I haven't been, and, uh, you know, this is one place I would love to visit, so so that's what I would do. I think Eileen uh, dropped off, um, otherwise I would have picked her, um, since she's not uh, there, then let me ask uh, Angie. Funny that you said that, because that was my answer, but um, <laughs> I've been to Bali four times. And it really has a place in my heart. So um, I would love to go back. Um, and also the Philippines. Um, so both places. But uh, yeah, so I've been to the Philippines, but just one island and there's thousands of islands. So there's a lot to see. And Bali is just amazing. There's amazing people there. So I'd love to go back and see the friends that I've met and um, head back after we get a vaccine. So, oh, now I pick somebody. Um, let's see, we'll go. How about Alex Artiga? Are you there? I, I am here if Alex is not gonna okay. go. Uh, <laughs> All right, JP. Um, yeah, this is the last question. Is it's pretty funny. There's so many of those. Oh, um, you, you got to answer that one. I that one made me laugh out loud when I saw it. <laughs> Oh, well, this goes back to when I was a kid, uh, you know, in, in our um, uh, uh, tradition, in Haitian tradition, we're all supposed to wear the same outfit as our older brothers, and I have three of them. So we'd, we'd all go to church one Sunday, all looking like quadruplets, and that really wasn't <laughs> one of my favorite <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, uh, yeah, I don't even want to begin to describe what the outfit look like <laughs> yeah um let's see who can i pick uh my mom is actually on the on the call so i cannot answer that question <laughs> yeah well um who's this i'll pick you oh this is uh lilia lilia i'll pick her i'll yeah, pick her 
pick it <laughs> person. Who hasn't talked about? Who hasn't talked yet? Has Dan gone? <laughs> All right, I'll go. Uh, let's see. Um, if I could teach a class on any subject or skill, no matter how obscure what it would be, what would it be? Uh, I've gotten really, really into gardening of late. And um, this has been, I don't know if there are other gardeners, um, you know, but like backyard gardening, like just in my own house. Uh, I'm also part of the urban garden club at my local community. Um, and I have uh, connected with an NSU climate scientist who partners with me on my gardening. And he taught me this technique for uh, cultivating sprouts using pelleted seeds in uh, egg crates. Um, and it's unbelievable. Like the yield is one plant per seed. It's, I've never seen anything like it. So that would be my uh, class, uh, not on digital marketing, but uh, how to increase your yield of basil plants uh, through pelleted seeds and egg crates. <laughs> Thanks, Leticia. Uh, all right, how about Nishama? Sorry if I bo uh, botched your the pronunciation there. No, you actually got it right <laughs> the first time. <laughs> um, which question should I answer? Anyone that kind of calls to you, with my um, preference being number five. <laughs> with what? Oh, I just like the one about the worst outfit because I think that's hilarious. Uh, but no, um, any, anyone, I mean, anyone. Yeah, that, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. There's, there's <laughs> like, yeah, a, more than two or three boxes of them. Um, so, oh, so I'm gonna do number one. Um, what is one new hobby? So basically, um, it's just with everything going on and just uncertainty and blah blah blah, and, you know, isolation and quarantine. It can be pretty crazy and I'm also new to Miami um, one I love music um, and I love dance but I have five left feet um, and they used to have they used to offer um, classes here at the gym but since this whole thing with corona it shut down so the Zumba like I started taking to Zumba and um, since everything's been shut down I go on YouTube and I just put on whatever song and then whatever comes next. Um, and I've been doing this, I think for two and a half weeks already and I can go for two to three hours. Um, I FaceTime with my family and so I forgot because they wake up at the time that I'm dancing. <laughs> and it's just like, it's been the most incredible thing. Something that I never thought I could do because I didn't think I had the coordination and just, it just shows like, it, it doesn't even matter in the beginning, it wasn't about the moves. It's about what, you know, doing something that's gonna make you feel amazing. And then it's amazing how, you, how our brain records just the movements and all of a sudden you're moving and you're dancing and you're like, how did this happen? And the second thing that I did is um, this one, I started learning new languages <laughs> um, through an app called Duolingo. And it's really been incredible. I discovered it also two weeks ago um and now i can i i knew one word in spanish and now i can have sent i can do sentences so those two have really been amazing and i think everyone that i speak to or if randomly comes up a conversation i share it because yeah it's it's stimulate intellectually stimulating and it's also interactive and i think that's what we need that's great um, so pick any participant who hasn't spoken yet, and um, they're up. Uh, I'm not sure who hasn't spoken. Uh, so I don't think we've heard from Shireen, Mario, uh, and Annalise. Annalise. Um, Let's go with Annalise. Okay, Annalise da Costa Gomez. Let's see, I don't know if she's there. Uh, why don't we go with, uh, and uh, have we heard from Angie, Herchuk? Yes. Yeah, we heard from Angie. Yeah. Okay. But I don't know if we've heard from Sharon or Anna Carano or... Yeah, let's do Anna Carano and then uh, Sharon. So Anna Carano? Uh, I think she just dropped. Oh, okay. Why don't we do Sh uh, Sh Shireen? Uh, Shireen Joseph, you're up. Okay. The fourth question, um, one of the places I would like to visit um, 
it would be St. John's. Um, the reason why, um, that's where my grandmother is from since moving here to the United States. I haven't gone to see her, so, you know, I've been trying to contact her via phone and stuff like that. So I think that would be a perfect time to come and visit her and see my family. Oh, that's great. Um, Leticia. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh, I'll be, I don't want to end on a sort of depressing note, but um, the first place in the world that you'd want to visit after there's a vaccine. I'm gonna have to say two things. Um, and the first is Miami because my parents and my dog are there <laughs> and my friends, but, um, but also Brazil um, because the rest of my family is there and who knows when that's gonna happen. And that reality has been sinking in really deeply the last couple of days. Yeah. Well, we miss you. We want you to come visit. Thank you. Uh, Mario, are you there? Mario, no, yes. Uh, let's see. I think that's everybody. This was fun. I really appreciate this, guys. Thanks. Anna, share. Anna Lima. Uh, Anna hasn't gone. Yeah, but uh, oh, Anna Lima hasn't gone. Mm -mm. Oh my God. Let's let's say okay. I think everyone else is gone. Our biz hacker, save the best for last. Take us home, Anna. <laughs> Oh boy. Well, I was going to, I was going to say the first place in the world I would want to visit would be my mom in New Jersey because, um, you know, it's funny. I just always took it for granted that I could just get on a plane and go see her or anybody that I want to see. And, um, or Leticia, you know, right there next door in New York. Um, and so that's where I would want to go. And, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to the you know, day, hopefully sooner than later, when we can all sort of get back to those things that we'd like to do. Well, with that, uh, you know, I want to say that I wish so, I wish, I wish so much that I could be uh, sharing a beer while I learn more about you guys, uh, but um, this is a close second. I wanted to just acknowledge all that Lilia Posos has done to make today's event and everything we do at Biz Hack a success. Uh, and I just wanna um, close by telling you how um, genuinely uh, joyful it is for me to, to be able to do this with all of you. So I wish you all the best, stay safe, stay sane, stay in touch. Uh, this is really just the beginning of your Biz Hack journey. And for those of you who are gonna be part of the five-week course, Blanca, Alex, the five folks who got free seats today, I look forward to seeing you in class on May 12th. Thanks a lot. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.